Hello, everyone. I feel like I want to say welcome to my YouTube channel, but it's not quite my YouTube channel. Um, but we are live, and I am joined by my fabulous colleagues. We've already decided um, to want to keep it fun. We want to keep it casual and informative. So we're going to go by our first names tonight. You can see, you know, we're senators and reps. It's it's in our titles, but I'm going to go by Tawana tonight. And so I'm joined tonight by Mona and Jamila, and we are going to have a fun conversation about tracking bills. But first, I'm going to have my friends, my colleagues, introduce themselves really quickly. Start with you, Mona, and then we'll pop over to Jamila. Hi, everybody. So great to be with you tonight. I'm Mona Das. I have the honor of representing the 47th District as the state senator. Uh, that incorpor uh, incorporates Kent uh, <laughs> Kenton, Renton, a tiny bit of Renton, Kent, Covington, Auburn, and a sliver of Black Diamond. Thank you for being here. And greetings, everyone. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know how to keep myself contained. I'm so excited to be here with you all. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. It's the Tawanda show. I got to get it right. <laughs> So my name is Jamila Taylor. I am representing um, the 30th district and I'm just in awe of all of the womanly magic, the brown girl magic, the black girl magic, and bringing you the civic lessons that we all should know and want to get involved in. Um, the 30th district is uh, super South King County, part of um, North Pierce County. So we have Federal Way, Algona Pacific, um, Milton, parts of unincorporated King County, and parts of Des Moines, and um, and just you know great parts in between, and all 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 up in there in the South South King County area and North Pierce County. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, I am so happy to have both of you joining me tonight. And this is all of our show. I mean, at the end of the day, what we truly care about is making sure that our community has access to our state government, that we're doing our part to break down some of the very complex, um, I don't know, themes and issues and challenges that honestly we face even as legislators. Um, but we want to make sure that we're um, bridging that gap for community. So as I'm learning, I want to make sure that I'm sharing with community. And tonight's topic is how to track a bill. And I have to be honest, so many folks will at me on social media or will be in my DMs about bills and I'm new, but I'll take a look and I'll, I'll, say, I'll think to myself that I'm pretty, this bill is dead. This bill is done for this session. Um, I don't know it all, and I'm learning some new topics like zombie bill and Christmas tree bill. Um, but I just figured between the three of us, we could really help community to figure out how to track a bill um, and how to save some of the energy this session if the bill is in fact dead and not going to move forward. Um, and what circumstances maybe a bill can come back to life. So I'm going to start with a quick question for the two of you. Well, actually for the three of us. What was your experience tracking legislation before you became a state lawmaker? <laughs> uh, I had to be directed to the state legislature website to track a bill, but I, it still wasn't clear to me how a bill moved. Um, I, I grew up in the 80s, and so my favorite um, cartoon is um, how a bill becomes a bill. So yeah. if it wasn't in that sound of that music, um, I wasn't getting how it was getting done here. And, and, and just to see the process live and how it, there's a lot of points of engagement that I was inspired by. <laughs> I had never been to Olympia before. I had never been to the Capitol before I came for orientation after I was elected. So I didn't know anything. Um, and so I, everything that I know, I've learned in the last uh, three sessions. I'm in that same boat. I honestly was not tracking bills before I became a senator. And um, yeah, so I've learned everything that I know in the last, what has it been, 72 days that we've been in session. Um, but I had no clue before, which is probably why it's very exciting to be able to help 
community members to learn the process because there are some tools that we can talk about tonight. Um, and it's and it's okay if you have no clue how to, because again, I am now a lawmaker and just 72 days ago, I had no, no idea how to do this. Um, so I have another question for each of us. How is a bill first introduced? I know a lot of folks ask, how do you even write a bill? How does this even happen? How was the bill first introduced based on your experience? Well, I will, I will share the really good news. If you are watching tonight and you have a good idea and you think, you know, why is this not a law? It should be a law. Reach out to one of us. Uh, our staff will actually write the bill, which is great. Uh, and we can, we have input in, you know, what that looks like and how much and, you know, all, how little. And, you know, I have a great story. I had a, a, a realtor friend reach out to me and say, I think there should be diversity and equity training uh, in the realtor uh, continuing education. And now uh, that idea, you know, we helped turn it into a bill and it's almost through the process. Um, and so now that bill will, you know, knock on wood, hopefully become law soon. And that was just based on an idea she had. So if you have an idea, reach out to us um, and we'll see what we can do to make that um, that into law. If that's something that we also agree with you on. Right. Yeah, it's like when you have shared values with community and you, you, you have an idea of a concept, but you really haven't been in that space. I really appreciate it when the community comes to me and says, hey, Jamila, or Rep Taylor, whatever my name is now. <laughs> uh, you know, have you considered, you know, uh, bringing a bill forth on this? And, and you know, the best time to do that is during the interim because we have lots of time. It's it's kind of like getting all of your um, game pieces together, the collaboration, the community buy-in, and then dropping it at the beginning of the session and working the bill in in the time it takes to to get through the legislative session. I did not understand the pace of the legislative session until you're watching not just one bill that you were watching and, and advocating for, but several bills. And I'm, I'm told that usually there was, what, 700 bills dropped in a legislative session. That, that's a lot of advocacy that's coming at you. And so that interim work is even more important at that point. Can I just clarify two things, Jamila? Um, first of all, for those of you who don't know, in Washington, our sessions mm. are either 60 days and every other year they're 105 days. And so that's it. We pass all the laws in Washington state in either 60 days and this year we have the long session, which is 105 days. So when Jamila talks about interim, what she means is that time between when session ends and when session starts again, which is usually, you know, May through January, um, beginning of January. And that's, and, and then I also want to just share, because I learned this recently from someone when I said, oh, drop a bill. They thought that I meant, you know, give up on that bill. No, when we say mm -hmm. drop a bill, it means that we put that bill into the system and that bill then starts its way along the process. So dropping a bill in this case is a good thing. So if community has a really good idea about what's working or not working for them, and they want to um, introduce legislation in partnership with a legislator, um, what do you think is the best or easy tool for getting more information about that bill if drafted? So if we have a draft the bill, it's going to move the process, um, what tools do you all use? And I'll share my all, but what tools do you use to track the bill through the process? I can start first. I'm going to share my screen. Um, I, and it took me some time. I did not know this on day one. So I'm going to share my screen really quick. I will show you what tool I use. Here we go. So hopefully everyone can see this. This is kind of, I pulled up one of my bills and this is my cheat sheet for how I track bills. I use this diagram here. I'm a Senator, so I track my bills in the Senate 
we talked about introducing a bill. So you have an idea about legislation that's working, non-existent, not working. And so you wanna introduce legislation. It then has an opportunity to be heard in committee. And so this is like a little map, almost like a little hunt of where your bill is in the process. So I like, if, if it's my bill, um, I also kind of know where my bill is because I'm I'm anxiously anticipating the next step. But if I'm trying to find out information about one of my colleagues' bills, I use this diagram to see a bill has been introduced. It's going to be heard in the committee in which it was assigned. I can tell if that bill will be heard on the floor. And this tells me it was passed out the chamber, which then sends it over to the House. Um, this is Bill 5184, which was heard in committee. And another resource is I scrolled down to see um, what action was taken in committee. So if you want to know, well, it went to committee, but what happened? Did it you know, pass, fail? If it didn't pass out of committee, it wouldn't make it to the floor. But also you can see the votes. And I like to tell folks that being on um, the strength of the support, that can also give you an idea of maybe how far your bill might move through the process not a guarantee, but this is a tool that I use. I use the information down here in bill history, but I simply use this diagram because it will show you all the way to um, when the governor will you know, sign it into law. Uh, so I will stop sharing my screen, but I'd love to hear from you too, kind of your process um, when you were tracking a bill's um, progress. And Tawana, did you give the website for, for that for people to to be able to look into if they want? I didn't. But I'm sure maybe I think it's leg.wa.gov. Uh, something yeah, it's simple like, like that. <laughs> I don't yeah, know how to it's, type it into a box, but maybe staff can put it on the screen. It's app.ledge.wa.gov. Yeah. You can do it on the website or there is an app you can download, which I have on my phone. And when I'm on the phone with the constituent and they ask about a certain bill, I just quickly type it in there and then I can see exactly where that bill is in the process. First of all, there's an app for this. Yeah, I did not know that. I did not know that. There's an app. What is it called? You're frozen. Are you frozen for real? Yeah, Mr. Doss is frozen. <laughs> well, but I'm the one that screenshot this. You know, <laughs> you know, one of the things is, is that I was contacted by a Washington resident just last night asking about support for a bill. It comes up organically as you're engaging with communities, sometimes on social media, what have you. And it turns out I was like, oh, I, I needed to figure out what the, the bill number was so I could find out whether um, where it was in the process. And I certainly went to the leg.wa.gov to look up the bill and then see um, what action we had taken. And before I could finish doing my lookup, the constituent was able to find that I had already voted on the, the bill that um, he was asking me to support. And, and it was something that had already passed through the House floor. And so I was just like, wow, I wanted to make sure that I knew what, what I was talking about because I remembered a bill, but sometimes some, you know, there are a lot of similar bills that come through. Um, I wanted to make sure it was the, the same thing he was talking about that I was talking about. And that app helped me, you know, certainly go straight to what you know the voting history whether it had bipartisan support where it is in the process now you know you have two chambers of the legislature you you all are on the other side of the aisle <laughs> <laughs> so i don't get to see you every day and 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 i i get to work with you differently as a state representative than if i was in partnership as a senator and I love that I see in the comments, someone is saying TVW is a great resource to monitor bills. And that's on our, our list of information tonight. Absolutely. Um, look, at I love our team. They're spotlighting you all's comments, definitions. Um, we have such a great comms team. Um, but TVW is a great place. And I like to tell folks in the process of tracking a bill, it is watching it move through committee or if it's going to be heard on the floor, but also listening to the testimony, listening to who's for and against it and why. 
um, watching the votes, who voted for it, you know, why, why wasn't it, you know, unanimous? Is it, was it a party line vote, which pretty much means the Democrats and Republicans all voted the same way. But I think there are multiple components to tracking a bill. That diagram makes it really easy for me, but I also do listen to hearings to learn if, especially if a bill didn't pass one session or you know a previous session and it's back again, I love watching hearings to know, well, what happened or bills that may be coming over to the Senate from the House. I do like listening to hearing and um, hearings and testimony to understand what folks were saying about the bill, all um, the community or other letters about the bill. So thank you for sharing that review is one way to also track your bill. And if you're, in, in, oh, if you're interested in a bill, you can get notifications on when a new action is taken on it. So when a bill is brought to a hearing and when a vote is on a hearing um, on a bill, and then it moves through the process and, and it makes it easier to know like what's going on and when. Yeah. And one thing that um, folks might not know is if a bill starts in the House, it goes all the way through the House process and then it goes to the Senate and goes through the, the Senate process. That same bill or a different bill can actually start in the Senate. And if it does start in the Senate, it has to go through the Senate process and then it has to go through the House process. So each bill has to cross both uh, chambers or go across the rotunda, if you will. And the good news for that, uh, in my mind, uh, now that I've been here for a little bit, is that it is put in front of you know all 147 legislators uh, for consideration, and so we do have the opportunity to add amendments to any bill. Uh, we have an opportunity to add uh, feedback or, or comments to every bill that goes through. The other thing that I find um, that people don't know is a majority of the bills, I'd say a lot of them, go through unanimously. Uh, you only hear about the ones on the news that are sort of contentious, uh, where there's people that, you know, are for it and against it. But a lot of our bills actually are uni unanimous and go through pretty seamlessly. And a lot of those bills are what we call cleanup bills, where a previous bill m missed a, a comma or a period or a sentence. And those, those bills uh, generally, you know, go through the system pretty quickly. So how can community members make their voice heard during a bill's initial or first hearing? What advice do you have for community members having their, their voice heard? Well, I think one of the first things you can do is, is, is reach out to your legislators specifically, especially if they're on the committee that uh, is the concerns the bill you're interested in and you should also sign up to give testimony and i i, I think we have a, a way of doing oral testimony with it. that's time limited but you can also um sign in to give written testimony and we do track and see okay there were 35 people who signed in for oral testimony testimony but then there are other 100 you know 150 or 200 or a thousand people who signed in um, not wanting to testify, but to show their support. And, and that does mean a lot. It does. And Senator uh, uh, Mona, your screen froze. We never got the name of the app and the audience is asking <laughs> it. And I want to know what is this app? <laughs> yeah. So I realized what I did. I, I, it's not an app. I just made it an app on my phone. So I have an iPhone. Mm -hmm. And I took the URL and made that link an app. Um, so it shows up as an app on my phone. So uh, yeah, I froze and uh, yeah. So fun fun with broadband today, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's not really an app, but I made it look like an app. So like you saved it to your um, home screen. Yeah. I saved it to my home screen, the link to my home screen. Yes, that's exactly what I did. Did you want to add on having your voice heard um, yeah, I think, you know, Jamila, Jamila's bringing up a great point right now, especially with COVID. Um, you are able to come and testify on your on something that you care about from anywhere in the state. Mm -hmm. uh, we've actually had people testify from other countries as well uh, or other states. And that is a really great. Um, it's a great way to have your voice heard. And if you aren't comfortable testifying, because there are definitely people that aren't, uh, Jamila is correct, you know, s submit your written testimony 
uh, you know, it, we really do look at those and we, you know, the, the written testimonies are, are, are really special. I think when people share why they care about an issue, um, we definitely re read those. I'm going to share my screen one more time before I jump into the next question. Next question is, what does it mean if a bill is heard in a policy committee or budget committee? But I want to um, share my screen again. Um, Christina, this is for you. Uh, you might have missed it when I shared it earlier. But this is kind of, you asked for a visual. This is the best visual that I have to follow the process of your bill. So if it's start the house, it's introduced, it needs to be heard in a committee, it needs to be heard in the floor, it needs to pass the chamber. And then it repeats the process where it then will be heard in the Senate, heard in a Senate committee, heard on the Senate floor, and it passed the chamber. And then down here is when it gets to the governor and then eventually will be signed into law. So this is a really good visual. Now there are, other um, components of if it's heard in a policy committee, if it's heard in a budget committee, if it's pulled from rules, other things that just um, are not going to show here on the diagram, but that information can be found pretty much here under bill history, well, where even I go look to see, um, there's some other emails and notifications we get to tell like when bills have been pulled rules. But I pay close attention to all of the description here to see what's happening and when. And I think, Mona, you can probably correct this. And maybe you too, Jamila. For me, I'm still new. But there are some bills this session. And this is what inspired me to do this um, conversation. There are some bills that were introduced. And the only activity was a first reading or maybe it was referred to a committee this session and no other activity. So in my mind, that bill is dead. If the last activity, considering it is March, the last activity <laughs> was in January, my assumption, and you two can correct me if I'm wrong, is that's it for this session. But I'm new here, so. <laughs> well, I learned my first year. Um, there is nothing is dead until signy die. And signy die is our very last day of session. So there's a few things that can happen to it. Um, if your bill is a good idea, but the chair didn't want to hear it for whatever reason, and, and in normal, in, in, in years and non-COVID years, I will say a lot of bills are introduced as companions. So Jamila will introduce a bill in the House. I will introduce the same exact bill in the Senate. And that way they're both going through the process at the same time in case hers has a, a, um, a hitch in the giddy up, then we can you know, then we can move my bill. If if my bill ha runs into issues, then we can move her bill. So that's a lot of times what, where you see bills, you know, the chairs didn't hear both bills because they know, uh, they call them the mover bill. So whether Jamila's is the mover or mine is the mover, uh, just depends on, you know, which, which bill is going to be the one that's going to try to move along the process. So when, when I say that a bill isn't dead until signy die, that means that if you had a good idea, and um, let's say you have a bill uh, that is related to uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, oh, actually, I'll give you an example from one of my bills, my plastics bill. And you really wanted to also, um, you know, ban not only styrofoam, but you wanted to ban um, a certain kind of styrofoam, but that wasn't in the bill then you can actually add an amendment to the bill. And then that way your bill is now part of my bill. And so that's one way you can keep that bill alive. Uh, the other thing, and I know, I know um, Tuana has learned this this year, um, you can turn your bill into what's called a budget proviso. So instead of it being a law, it's money that's allocated for your idea that's part of the budget. Um, and so it just gets rolled into the budget. And then that's a, another way to keep a bill alive. Um, so there are a few ways to do that. And this year, I learned something new. I had two bills uh, that did not make it out of committee. Um, the, my eviction moratorium bill, well, the governor just did a proclamation and uh, made that bill that m extended the eviction moratorium, which what, what my bill was going to do until the end of June. So that was great. And then today, another one of my bills um, 
became uh, uh, an executive order from the insurance commissioner. So that was that was a surprise today too. So um, you know, there's lots of ways, and I'm still learning as well. Um, I know Tawana and Jamila are newer than I am, but I'm still new too. So we're all we're on this learning journey together, which is why we really wanted to do this uh, today. And I saw a question saying, a um, couple of questions. Can we assist someone that's not our constituent? Um, I, the answer is yes. I think a lot of us definitely um, want to focus on um, issue areas that are important to us, that are, you know, we're passionate about, that, m that maybe is impacting our district. But the answer is yes. We could work with any stakeholder, any community member on getting legislation um, or even co sponsoring it. And then there was a question about anticipating a special session. I'm new here, so I don't even know what the terms or conditions are for a special session. So I just go where they tell me to go. So if we're here longer, then, <laughs> then I'll be here longer. But I don't know if anyone else wants to chime in on that. Well, let, let's uh, go back just a little bit. I mean, talk about cutoffs, because that you know when you're talking about a bill that was introduced in January and you and you think it may be dead, it's because there are certain things that have to happen throughout the session and yeah. and deadlines that need to be met. Otherwise, we could be doing this forever. Um, and so um, there are cutoff dates, and there's policy cutoff dates, and then the fiscal cutoff dates. Like on the House side, we have policy committees and fiscal committees, fiscal meaning finance, like how we bring in revenue. Transportation has both revenue and um, budgetary responsibility. Our appropriations um, does the operating budget. Um, and then we have capital budget, which is the, the physical things that we're paying to build. And then all of that is in, I think, ways and means on the Senate side. So you have this super committee that is like taking care of all the financial business of the, uh, of the Senate side. Um, and so there are uh, policy and, and fiscal cutoffs so that we can get things moved along in the whole session and get to floor action to actually accomplish something in the session. Thank you. And we will go back to, you know, what does it mean if a bill is heard in a policy or budget committee? To answer the question um, about 5226, it actually is over in the House and had a public hearing on March 22nd. So same, those bills are moving through the process that was heard in the Senate. It's now over in the House. Um, what do you to um, what, what would you say as far as like what does it mean if a bill is heard in a policy committee or budget committee? And I know Jamila, you kind of started speaking to this a little bit, but if you'd like to add anything more, so uh, policy committees are um, the the issues that we're facing. So healthcare, um, uh, uh, child welfare, um, public safety, um, environment, energy, all kinds of policies that we're making as it relates to what happens within the four corners of our state. Fiscal is related to our money, how we bring money in and how we spend that money. And I will say that um, in this, so in their Senate, and this is even more confusing. There's different committees in the Senate than there are in the House. And in the House, there's a lot more committees because there are twice as many people. So there are 49 senators and 98 representatives. So uh, there are more committees because they have more people that need to um, you know, be on different committees. So if a bill is introduced, so for example, my plastics bill this year, we heard it in the Environment, Energy and Technology Committee. And then after it passed that committee, it went to Ways and Means because any bill that has a what's called a fiscal note, meaning it's going to cost the state more than $250,000 for two years, has to go be reviewed by a fiscal committee. And in the Senate, it, there's just one. It's Ways and Means. And in the House, Jamila, do you want to talk about the different financial committees in the House? Yeah. So, um, so in terms of revenue, we have the finance committee. So these are the taxing and and, and the um, other kinds of um, uh, 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 
fiscal um, revenue generating activities of um, the state. And then on, on the other side for budgeting, it's the appropriation, which is the operating budget. Um, so how a school spend their money, um, uh, how a, you know, if, if we are adding more money to the court system, it comes out of the operating budget. If we um, have issues that are related to transportation, like um, building more roads, that comes out of the transportation budget and, and revenue side. Um, and then there's the capital budget. So let's say we need to build more schools in a particular um, legislative district. That's going to be coming out of um, the committee that's determining the capital budget. Um, and the reason why we have committees is because you kind of want someone to be a subject matter expert in a particular topic to get, you know, make it easy for community to engage with um, legislators on a topic and to con contain the, the kinds of legislation that is similarly situated. So you want all the education policy bills to come to the education committee and then move on from there. Sometimes it's imperfect because some, some bills go to local government when it could go to uh, you know, a fiscal committee. And, and we're, we're not always clear. And sometimes <laughs> we find out later. But one of the things that's interesting also is when you when you sponsor a bill, we don't always have control of that bill once it leaves our hands. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> what about NTIB? What does that mean? And how can that impact the course or progress of a bill? NTIB stands for Necessary to Implement the Budget. So if your bill has a revenue attached to it, meaning your bill will create revenue for the state, uh, then it is not subject to any of these cutoffs. Uh, so you can you can actually pass that bill on the very last day. Um, you know, it, it, it makes it through the process a little different. And it's one of those things because, you know, the budget writers are happy to find bills that uh, increase revenue for the state because that helps us pay for the things that we need. So necessary to implement the budget are special bills. Um, like for example, this year, uh, our, the big bill that we're hoping to pass is the capital gains tax bill. And so that is definitely necessary to in implement the budget and is not subject to any of these other cutoffs. And I wanna say one other thing about a fiscal committee, which we didn't talk about, there's two types of fiscal committees. In the Senate, it's Ways and Means, and there's also the Transportation, which Transportation Committee also includes a budget. And so therefore there's two budget committees in the Senate and there, and I, I know uh, the House has also has a transportation committee and budget as well. There was a question about companion bills. Um, why this year we haven't seen as many companion bills. I'm still new here. So I, I'm not saying that as an expert or that I followed it before. I literally was told that this year, that this year there aren't as many companion bills. <laughs> um, but it's my understanding and feel free to, to add additional information that companion bills, sender, uh, similar to what Mona spoke about earlier, we're, we're trying to um, figure out which bill will be the mover, which bill will actually you know, become law. And so it's my understanding that sometimes there are companion bills, so we kind of double the odds of um, legislation moving forward and becoming law. But happy to have you all jump. That That's all I know. <laughs> Is that Jamila, it? I know I you have to go, right? Yes, I, I have to hop out, but I'm sure we're going to have a 102 class, so I'm hope, happy to come right back. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thanks for being um, here. Yes. And we'll have you join us again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so with the companion bills in years past, uh, typically for, you know, big bills, you know, not for the, you know, not for the, um, the bills that I talked about earlier, the sort of the cleanup bills, but for the big policy bills, you want to have a house companion or in, in, if you're in the house, you want to have a Senate companion. Uh, there's two really good reasons for that. In case one of the bills gets stuck, um, for whatever reason, it can't get out of the committee. Um, you know, there are members that don't want to vote for the bill for whatever. It needs more work. Uh, sometimes it can go through the House easier or the Senate easier. So that's one of the reasons for the companion bills. One of the other bonus reasons for me to have a companion bill is then I know I have a House member who is equally excited about a bill and will help my bill or their bill get through the opposite chamber. So in years past, 
uh, when Strom and I passed the plastic bag bill last year, you know, he cared so much about the policy that he helped shepherd it through the process in the, in the House, and I helped shepherd it through the uh, process in the Senate. And so it, you know, it really does create a, a true partnership, which I think is is really a lovely thing. And, and I'll just say this year, we didn't do a lot of companion bills because of the remote nature of our session. We really didn't want, um, you know, we just wanted to focus on the, the policies and um, not keeping track of all the companion bills. We knew we knew session was going to be hard enough remote. And so we really wanted to, um, you know, just focus on one policy versus two bills. Thank you, Mona. And there was a question about, I'm going to share my screen again. There was a question about how can folks learn what bills we may be sponsoring? So I'm going to use you for an example. I'm yeah. going to show you a new person, how I figure out what bills um, we'll say um, Senator Doss or Mona might be sponsoring. I'm going to take you the way I do it and feel free to let me know if there's an easier way. So I go to the Washington State Legislature page and go to Senate and pull up the senators and scroll down to the senator whose information I'm trying to find, go to bill sponsorship, and then ta-da, I can choose which biennium I'm looking at this year so I can see all the bills you've prime sponsored and all the bills where you are a secondary sponsor. And then I, you could do the same thing, same process for me. So you can see this year where I've been a prime sponsor or secondary sponsor. Feel free, right. Mona, to tell me if there is a quicker, easier way to figure that out. I haven't found one. Uh, if if our staff knows an easier way, that's that's how I do it too. Thank you. I have just a couple more questions for tonight. And again, to everyone, this is a bit of a 101. And hopefully you can tell that just when you think you are um, putting together the pieces of the process, there's always something else that can be thrown in there. And that is true, I would say for the legislature that um, it is a little bit tricky, but that's why we all get to work together um, so we can better understand and, and follow the process and feel free to reach out to your um, legislators and ask them you know, questions or send emails asking about a bill or, or call because there are lots of folks who would love to support you. I think one thing that I would love to jump into um, are amendments. So amendments in our chamber, but also when a bill goes to the um, opposite chamber, there can be more amendments. So what would you, I actually just right now asked if I would offer an amendment for transportation budget. That, that is my first amendment this entire session because I'm like, I'm not ready for these amendments. I don't know what this means. Um, but from your experience, just if you'll tell us a little bit more about the roles that amendments play. And I know earlier you shared a little bit about you can, instead of your bill dying, add it as an amendment to someone else's bill. I did that my first year. My my bill died and I took my entire bill and then added to a, rep, a, a bill that rep. Fitzgibbons had offered and it has to, the titles have to match. So you can't just like add, you know, your bill to some random bill. It has to be a similar, um, you know, um, topic area and the, the bill title has to match. Um, so it has to be constitutionally relevant. Um, so adding an amendment. So uh, for example, um, my plastics bill that went through, it just uh, came out of the house environment committee today. Um, somebody from the wine industry wanted to have um, something added to the bill that we hadn't thought of. And so we agreed. We thought it was a great amendment. And so he offered the amendment um, in the committee. And uh, then in that committee, they accepted the amendment. So now that amendment is part of the bill as it moves forward. And so when they hear the bill on the next committee, that's just part of the bill. So they won't necessarily know it was an amendment or anything like that. So it's just part of the bill. So that's, um, it's an opportunity for any of us, any of us legislators to add an idea to a bill. And, and that's, you know, one of the things I've come to really respect about the legislative process, right? We have colleagues in um, different parts of the state, right? You know, I live in, in Kent, so it's a more urban area. So we have colleagues in the, in, in um, rural areas, we have colleagues on the other side of the aisle, we have colleagues with different perspectives. 
And so bills do go through this process and allow everyone to have their voice heard. And if you can get enough votes uh, for your amendment or for your bill, then that is uh, what moves forward. And I think one thing I'd like to share, kind of in closing, unless you have more to share, Mona, but throughout this process, and folks told me this from the very beginning, you have to work your bill and amendments are a part of that process. You have to work it. So you can introduce a bill, but if you don't work that bill and message different legislators, message committee members, um, telling them why you support it, why you're passionate about it, how this will make our community a better place, um, why this would add additional revenue um, to our budgets, um, folks simply won't know. So you working your bill, you communicating why other people should care as much as you do, um, will, you know, has the potential to help your bill to move through the process. And it's the same for amendment, which I would like to share. How do you um, propose an amendment? My advice to folks is if you have um, amendment language, that you, if it's a bill that you work, that you run that language by the prime sponsor of the bill, just like, hey, I'm thinking of adding these amendments. And then for bills that are being heard in the committee, you will need someone on that committee to sponsor the amendment, including me. So I may have a bill, um, I don't know if people make amendments to their own bills, but I guess, again, I'm still new here, they're figuring this all out. But if I have an amendment or if someone has an amendment to my bill, they have to send it to someone who is hearing it on a committee and ask them to sponsor the amendment. So yes, share it with me like, hey, I'm thinking this is, this is what can make your bill better. But in order for that amendment um, to be included or to be considered for a vote, someone on the committee who's hearing the bill has to sponsor it. I know that's a lot to understand, but I had an experience recently where someone was like, no, you, you take my amendment and you do the work. And I'm like, fortunately, it doesn't work that way. Um, so if it's an amendment that one, I agree with and would want to move it forward for a community member, it's the same thing. I would connect you to the sponsor so you can be transparent and share with that sponsor your ideas for how there can be improvements to their bill. And then you need to find someone who is a committee member hearing that bill and ask them to sponsor the amendment. Just, it's not random and any person do anything. There's lots of process. Mona, would you like that? To yeah, that? one thing that I'll add uh, to to, uh, to what you said, Tuana, is that um, if you do have an idea for an amendment, um, you don't have to write that amendment because uh, that's a lot of legalese and a lot of um, takes a lot of skill to do that. Uh, you can share your idea with the bill sponsor and see. And and we have staff. We have amazing, amazing staff. I will say. One of the most exciting parts about being a legislator is how amazing our staff is uh, in every aspect. And so our staff will take that idea and turn that into the actual, you, if the bill sponsor agrees with that amendment. Um, and then on the floor, on the Senate floor, or the House floor, any member of the body uh, in the Senate, 49 members can propose an amendment on the bill. Committee, so let's say my plastic, so you can, understand and engage in the process. Um, I love, thank you for sharing this. Uh, on the floor, every member um, doesn't mean it will actually be included. It's similar to an amendment, because sometimes people propose, um, so we get to communicate how we feel about amendments, but um, when you are thinking of ideas for bills, it doesn't mean, similarly, it doesn't mean a, a legislator is going to say, yes, I'm going to write this bill with you. And in fact, sponsor and help to push this bill forward. And it was great legislation. I Those ideas are for sure. And so, you know, I started and it is, and I just want to say this, it is designed on purpose to be complicated, confusing. Um, you know, we lobbyists are paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a month for, uh, clients. And the reason why is because these bills impact everybody. But when communities don't understand bills or don't understand the process or aren't there advocating, um, that is a detriment to our um, our state. And so I know when Tuana and I and Jamila talked about doing this, I mean, 
our goal is to educate our communities so that you all become part of the process. So it's not as uh, a foreign concept and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's accessible. And we want you to come along with us and advocate for the things that you care about. And we're, we're right there with you. We are right there with you. And we thank you all for being here with us. And I think I heard on average, you know, maybe a, a legislator might introduce up to 20 bills a, a session. I shouldn't say on average, could be up to 20 bills a, a session. I dropped seven this year. Um, there's <laughs> giving call. I, I usually drop, usually I technically, I typically drop between uh, 10 and 13, 10 and 20, 20, 10 and 15 bills a year. So it just depends. Uh, and usually I usually pass five to seven bills a year. So, so that's, it's, you know, all the bills I introduce don't become law, uh, but a lot of the bills I introduce become something else. Uh, they become either, uh, you know, budget proviso or they become, they get added to a, another bill. And I think we might have lost Tawana. <laughs> oh, there she is. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm back. My kids are coming home. I was always at the um, everything's opening up. So my kids are back in sports, but good sign that I need to get back to um, parental days. But the children are back. Thank you so much for partnering and helping to educate community. I could not do it without your expertise. Um, everyone, we definitely will move on to a 102, 201, or um, we'll keep sharing. It's just so important that we're learning together so we can be effective and really um, this experience. So thank you for joining us and we will plan another one in the future. Yeah. And please let us know in the comments, it. what is it that's confusing you and what do you want to know more about? We, we want to continue to do this and educating uh, and just being there and supportive. And, you know, we're, we're grateful for your support and uh, we can't wait to see you uh, in person someday soon. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye everyone. <laughs> Thank you.